What's going on, guys? Declaration? Brian? What's going on, peeps? And today, what are we working on, Brian? Oh, uh, I'm day whatever, 4,000 of the uh, transmission tunnel now. This is my new cooling system. <laughs> uh, so now we're going to paint the, this is the side that we had to do the big cutout on. I got some more Bondo in there. I did the first initial sanding, rough sanding. So I got to do a little bit more sanding. I'm going to paint the back side of it here with that undercoating stuff so it covers all that up. And, and, we, and, we, realized, and we realized today that the the driver's side of this transmission tunnel weighs like five times as much as the passenger side now. So. <laughs> yeah, it really does. His, 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 I'm not going to say bulletproof, but it's probably pretty close. <laughs> Throw some Kevlar in there. We'll be all good. Yeah, exactly. And me, what am I working on, Brian? So, the emergency, or the handbrake. Well, I don't say emergency. Or the parking brake. Yeah, I'm working on the parking brake. So I'm finally going to be on this, finally working on this, uh, assembling this together. This is going to be fun because I think this is the first time I've opened the instructions for this truck in a, in a while. Yeah, but, we haven't. Because we've been just kind of just doing what need to get done. <laughs> but I'm going to need the instructions because I don't know if you know this, uh, the e-brake comes in like 4,000 pieces. So it should be fun. Be a blast. E then I'll have to find something else we need to fix to keep talking about every video. <laughs> no. See, the only thing left is like seats and seat belts after this and glass. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah, so. We need to cruise the Google machine and see what the Florida specifications for these are. Yeah, see what the requirements are to get it registered. If we can get it registered and not have to do the whole side window thing. Yeah, that'd be nice. Or the windshield wipers. like. I'd rather, just because of the mess the windshield wipers take, it's just gonna be a, and knowing that we do have to pull the cab off again anyways, before this truck is done. So. Yeah, so yeah, the windshield wipers, motor, your two little wiper arms with little geared cogs on them, and a greased chain that has to run through the entire thing that you have to take off and we have to take the body off to fix the air conditioning. So, yeah, let's just, why don't we just stick the windshield wipers on there and hope that they work? And hope that they pass. Just hope they don't notice it. Just yeah, the... just just so they're on there. <laughs> yeah, let's make sure. Put some little RC car motors on so you can just hit a switch and it just turns a little <laughs> in, individual motors that'll spin and move and go up and down. You know, if we figured that how to work, we're not doing the cable and the motor anymore. We're just probably just gonna leave it like that. <laughs> yeah, huh. that thing's just a mess. Yeah, it it's is. a good system for vehicles that don't have windshield wipers, but it's a mess. It, it's messy. If we were doing the final assembly and we know we weren't taking this apart, I would have no problems doing it because, like you said, it's a great system. But knowing that I got to pull that greasy mess off in a matter of months, <sighs> I prefer not to do that. So, but yeah, we're gonna get to work and. Yeah, so we can turn on some fans. Sorry, not that we don't love you guys, but it's hot in here. Yeah, it's 97. Oh, it's 97 today. Uh, yeah, it, it was 96 when we started the intro. Yeah. Now it's 97. It's getting hotter. Uh, all right. <laughs> See you later, guys. Hey, guys. So I'm trying something a little bit different here. I don't know if you guys will like it or not, so just kind of let me know in the comments section below. So right here, what I'm doing is I'm going through all the little pieces and parts and organizing them and putting them in what, so I can find them when it's time to assemble it. And then I just went and grabbed the tools and you need one thing about the factory five instructions. They really are pretty good about telling you what tools you need per step. So I'm just going through figuring out, um, trying to piece it all together, see what part goes where. Um, this is one of the few parts in the manual that are extremely detailed. The manual does vary between uh, slight detail to very, very well detailed. This is actually one of the more well detailed set of instructions that it had. Uh, yes, that is a big mallet. I was just pushing it in a spring pin um, very carefully. I wasn't slamming down on it, but yeah. Um, yeah, this. Uh, this assembly of it, it looks kind of daunting, but it actually was not that bad. Um, uh, right now I'm just screwing on the handle, and I will say one thing, the 
screwing the push button into going against spring pressure was pretty annoying because of how smooth it is and you have to use lube to get the handle on first so your hands are already slick so that was a little annoying uh, but other than that it, it was actually a pretty straightforward process and not bad so now i'm drilling the bracket and i real quickly realized that i can't drill it that way with the drill press because it was hitting the side of the bracket so i ended up having to do a hand drill on that which was not fun and this is the clevises to fit the actual e-brake cables so i'm drilling those out so i can fit the e-brake e -brake cables in there because i have the stock ones from a 11 gt mustang now we're just lifting the truck to um, bolt down the e-brake handle um, on the bottom side of the truck man this lift has come in quite a lot of handy um, just with everything that's been going on uh, now Brian putting in some overtime he is uh, in the shop now finishing up working on the trans tunnel to try to um, get it ready so we can lay uh, carbon fiber on it so that's him just sanding it and getting it down uh, as you can see the cloud of body fill is surrounding him always make sure you wear your uh, breathing protection people um, Hey, what's going on, peeps? It's just me today, or right now. Gary's busy. I was putting some overtime in. As you can see there, working more to get, had to do some more cutting on this uh, cover here to get it over the, the trans tunnel to get it over the, and make room for the handbrake that we put in there, emergency brake, parking brake, whatever you guys want to call it. Uh, and there's a boot that goes with this, so we should cover up most of that, and then I can just seal in the rest. But now that all the holes are cut, everything's ready to go. I will be adding the fiber or carbon fiber to the two pieces. You saw me earlier sanding down that other one. We'll go take a look at that one. Oop, there's a hose there. Doing a walk around. And no, I don't have the fancy thing on. So if it's a little shaky, it's a little shaky. So that should be it. Yeah, there are a little bit of, there's a few rough, spot, rough spots in there, but uh, it's more or less ready to have the carbon fiber blanket put over the top of it and epoxied in, and which should cover up. The epoxy will fill in most of the little holes and we should get a nice flat surface with it. And this is by his feet all the way under the dashboard. So if it's a little messy right there, I don't think anybody's gonna notice. Welcome back guys. Brian? What's going on peeps? All right, so, uh, Tell me what, what, what got done, because uh, I was at work when you, you knocked this out. Well, um, we, we, I finished sanding off the other side, the driver's half of the tunnel over there. Yeah. Okay. So that should be, that is ready to go over there. I talked about that in my, when I was filming it. And then I, you saw me messing around with the lift. What I did is I had to come over here and put the passenger side in and make the cuts to go around the freshly installed parking brake handle. So. Yeah. Had to cut quite a bit out there to get it to drop in and again this was probably one of those oh you you probably don't need to cut this when it's the only thing if there was nothing else installed in the car i just dropped that in on top of the handle it probably fit but with wires and a transmission and shifters and everything else it required a a small amount of modifications hey like our motto some modifications may be required and they were required <laughs> and it was modified so now that's in there so now i can which is good, I'm glad I did this before I put the carbon fiber on there because I scratched the heck out of it. Oh, Going yeah. in and out, in and out, and cutting it, and that would have been really bad if I had to take the Dremel to... Did some carbon fiber. The carbon fiber I just did. So, so now the transmission tunnel is fit, formed, and ready, so I will be carbon fibering that. Maybe on tape, maybe not. Maybe I'll take the second one after I screw up the first one. That's a plan right there. Yeah, I like you get, you, get the, you get the process down first, and then I can <laughs> try not to mess up the second one quite as bad. So that's what we're going to do. So the next full video, we'll be assembling this thing fully and in the car, and maybe even starting on the seats once we know that's in there. Yeah. So that's where we're at there, peeps. I like it. I like it. Oh, man. 
You know, once we get the seats mounted, we may have to just do a rip in this thing just to know what it feels like when the seats don't move. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a little shady with the seats just kind of flopping around in the breeze down there. You know, that the drive shaft tunnel helps a little bit, but <laughs> that helps the lateral sliding. The, the tipping and rocking <laughs> has not helped at all. <laughs> And I'm not a light person, so once that mass starts moving, it's moving. <laughs> uh, who's the theory about mass, uh, matter in motion? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you guys can tell me in the comments. <laughs> but yeah, we are We're going to call that a wrap for today, though. Um, we got a lot done. Thank you, Brian. Hey, no worries. Burning a minute on oil, even when I'm at work. I like it. I appreciate it. But yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and um, please comment down below. Tell us what you guys think, and hit that subscribe button. We we need these rookie numbers. We gotta pump them up. Come on, get more people. Subscribe, please. We love you. <laughs> hey, just like the guy in the last video that pointed out that we were had our lifting arms too close together. Oh yeah. Which we did notice that after we lifted it up the first time, we're like, eh. Yeah. So the the, the front arm was about a foot. It, the front arm was about right there, like right there, and we, we realized like the before the frame actually starts to kick up, and this is about as far back as we can go on the back side. I, I know it looks very narrow based off of uh, most vehicles because you can go way, pretty much right in front of the rear tire. Uh, it's kind of hard to show. But yeah, the once you get past the where this pretty much where that joint is, the frame on both sides. The front and the back slope upwards. Yeah, so you can't it, get a, you can't safely put the frame any farther back. Yeah, the frame goes from right here and it angles all the way up to here. So there's uh, this is as far back as we can go. <laughs> but the front one now that we, we we noticed that though after the first time we lifted it, there's actually the junction where all these pieces all come together right under there. So that's where we've got that now. So it's and we do shake it every time the wheels come off the ground. Yeah, that, one that, of us jiggles it around to make sure it's stable on there. That is uh, the first thing that w we do. <laughs> so there you go. Somebody, somebody's watching, looking out for us. So we appreciate it. Yep. Cool. But yes. Panning. Slowly panning, panning, panning. 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 <laughs> All right. Have a good one, guys. Peace. Take it easy, beeps.